Hi there. I'm back on this pasture I haven't been to in seems like ages. I've done it a lot. I hope you can hear me. The wind's coming from that direction, as is the sun. So it's going to be a bit of a tricky one for recording, but I'll do my best. I've done this pasture so many times, but it's not to say there's still not stuff in it. I've done it a few times with the XP Deus 2. You might have seen one of my videos when I had a bit of a rant about it early doors because I was really struggling. And you all got really cross with me for getting cross with this. <laughs> But um, I'm now much more used to it. I'm digging a load of very iffy signals today because I've obviously got all the good ones out. There's no doubt about that. I've been over it so many times. I, I don't think there's anything obvious here, but there's lots of things which aren't obvious, including there's a little hole down there where I found just a tiny little buzzy sound. Now, my microphone isn't the best these days, my speaker rather. And if it's going to be windy, I'm not going to put the sound on. You're just going to have to trust me on it. But I, can, but I can bleep some stuff in. I've just found the tiniest Roman coin at depth. Now, once you get used to this machine, there's no doubt about it, it goes bloody deep. And I'm afraid to say, I don't even use it. I find a nice, nice 50p. I don't even use it on the reactivity that most of you guys use. You, you guys lower it to one or 1 1.5 on this. I don't like that. I'm keeping it at 2.5. And when I'm switching it around, low reactivity does help, but it also, causes its own problems to my ears anyway remember i don't have a screen i just use my ears i have done for years now um i've forgotten what i was saying <laughs> what's going on um i i'm keeping it i just got to keep my ears open a bit more because i fiddled around with the difference with, with with the lowering it and and it does make it slightly louder a deeper target but doesn't really make it i don't feel that much more obvious so i'm keeping the reactivity at 2.5 i do lower the audio response i don't want everything to sound like it's on the surface i hate that i want deep sounds to be deep not on the surface anyway i found a tiny little roman coin there i'm not sure what's on it i think it might be barbarous might be the soldiers and the standards um but that's lovely and i have also found which was a little bit more obvious apart from that 50p a little bit of pot rim and that was deep that was properly deep but again gave a very similar sound to the settings that i'm using which i put up for you this time i've, I've been avoiding putting my sen my settings up because i don't think i'm experienced enough yet for to to to, 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 to burden you all with my crappy settings but this now this was another very buzzy sound at nine good nine ten inches and i've just got it out I will plug you in for it, just so you can hear it on its hands now. Oh, it's a lovely day. It's windy as always, but I mean, we're used to that in this country now. Just wind all the time. Um, now, if I put this as close to the speaker as I can get it. The microphone, there you go. Yeah, this is one out of battery. <laughs> oh, God, right, well, that's that out. Oh, that's not very organised of me, sorry. It's been on, I kept it on. I'm not used to turning that off. Anyway, to try, it just sounds like a little cartridge. Sounds like a little, it sounds like a little coin, if you want my honest opinion. Um, and it was nice and deep. It's not. It's just a bit of copper. Just a bit of old copper, but it's a bit of old copper that I've not found before. So things like that just give you hope that if you're finding, still finding stuff and bits of past you've been to forever and ever with a new machine, well, it means there's, there's bound to be more stuff there. It's got to be, hasn't there? Hasn't there? Well, let's hope so anyway. Well, this gave a hell of a sound. You can understand why. And there's a bit of this up here every now and again. That's in rather lovely condition, isn't it? It's a cat badge from the, well, people who know about this sort of thing will know exactly what it is. It says, Ubique, la di da, la di da. Um, and it's a, well, I think, isn't that Royal Artillery? And I don't know what it ate, what it dates to, but there are cat badges and cat badges. And that's a jolly nice one, isn't it? Is it broken or bent, I wonder? Um, no, I don't think so. That's lovely. It's a smart one. 
Well, that's a nice sound. Quite subtle and high pitched and a little bit buzzy and a little bit buzzy, but we don't mind buzzies with the Deus 2 set up in the way I've set it up anyway, as long as they're not too low. Right, sound like a like a button. Sound like a brass army button. Like I've found a lot of today. Or oh, a bit of lead. Or oh, a cartridge. Nope. It's just a bit of copper strap end, I think. Um that looks like it's got some age to it. God knows what it was for, but I do think that's got some sort of age don't think it's particularly special but um but this is a bit special it <laughs> it's um my god those planes now I don't I find them really hard to age these it's a dress hook of sorts now it's not an early one, it's not Saxon or anything like that. Um, and I don't know how much, how much they went up to. I think it's probably Tudor or post-medieval. It looks to be cast that size, um, but it's a jolly nice thing that, particularly pretty one. So that's good, that's a nice sign. I'm just having a closer look at that copper we found just now. Um, and actually, I think that's part of a medieval strap end of sorts. If you look at that sort of zigzagging there, is that some sort of design? I'm not quite sure how that would have worked. Um, well, it's quite fine. And I just don't know. hasn't it? Let's get that under the magnifying glass. Well there aren't many signals like this in this field anymore. Um, I've come away from where I was concentrating on because I'm going back to the car and I've been over this land a lot. I don't, I'm not sure I would have found this with the old machine. It was right down there um, and maybe there's a reason I haven't found it before. Now I wasn't quite sure what it was at first when it was like that. I thought it'd come off something but it's one of those early medieval buckles well not early medieval but it's medieval so I think 1250 to 1450 something like that and it and I've just prized it round gently now taken the dirt out of it and I think um and I think this bit here which I'm not going to try and prize out was um was a clasp of sorts but I think that rotates as well so that section comes out too um I'm not going to do that now, <laughs> but that's lovely. Well, it's, you know, it's not the most special thing in the world. That's not going to win. And it's got some lovely sort of hatching there, sort of medieval zigzagging. It's not going to win Artifact of the Year award, but, um, but it's just the fact that I'm still finding stuff. Um, and that's part of the reason I bought this machine was to give me an edge on pasture. I don't think it's any better necessarily on, on arable land. But I really do think it gives me the edge on pasture and I'm finding little bits like that on land I've been over a thousand times. So that's good. Found quite a lot of stuff, which I've not found before, but it's all been rubbish. It's been bits of lead and cartridges, lots of cartridges. Um, ring pools are always up here. Been hard work, but there's a buzzy one here. There's an old track here. I've never found much on it before, so I don't concentrate on it. But you can see where it's obviously you know, been used for quite a long time. And still is. That's a high-pitched buzz. Very, very faint. It's not iron. You can sort of tell when there's no grunt around, but, but just the high-pitched buzz. It's a, it's a really good sign. Um, but it's very faint. And it's still in there, which is a good sign too. <sighs> Get out and sounding nice. Come on, be not a cartridge or not a button 
or not a piece of lead. It's a coin of sorts, I think, but and it's copper. So I would say that's got to be Roman. <laughs> God, I've been out here for a long time and that is a Roman coin. That is, I think that's a Salonina. I think that is a, I think that's one of the girls. I'll, I'll give you some proper photos in a minute. Um, wow. Crikey, I, like the advert says, because I'm worth it, I deserve, I really do deserve this. Now, um, I've found a Salonina up here before. And I can see SA, yes, hooray. She doesn't come out well in coins. If you look at the last video I did of her, which is quite a long time ago now. Um, she, her portrait's very rarely good. And it's much the same on this. Now, I think it's an Antoninianus because they tend to be. I think it's too big for a denarius. Um, the Antoninianus was supposed to be a double denarius. And again, I don't think that survived that well particularly. I've got to be a bit careful with it. Um, don't rub it too much now. We'll take that home and have a look. Well, look, let's go back to headquarters with this because it could turn out to be quite a nice coin. She was the wife of... Hmm, now let's get this right. Galerius, Gallienus, um, one of the two, I think Gallienus. I don't think that survived particularly well, but I'm thrilled. I really am thrilled with this because that, that's been hard work finding that. Okay, let's go. Hi there, and welcome to temporary headquarters from beautiful North Devon. A far cry from that really really blustery day you've just seen which was um, recorded at the end of March. I'll explain that in a, in, in a minute but here we are in the middle of June um, and, and, I just, and, and, and it couldn't be nicer <laughs> and he absolutely loves it. The beach is just behind me. It's the most glorious place in the world. Anyway just have a quick look at this coin. Now it is Salonina. Now I've talked about her before. Now I was very carefully, I've started using um, the brass, the brass section of the composite cleaning pen on this. It's my go-to tool these days. I've, it's it's the one I like the most. But on on certain coins, you've got to be slightly careful that you don't scratch them. But this one has worked really well. But I have been extra careful with it, and just really, really gently going round the um, the legend and her face and all sorts of stuff's come up. It says Con, um, short for Cornelia, I think. Um, so would that be C-O-N? Anyhow, it says Con Salonina Org. She was the wife of, of Gallienus, who in turn was the son of Valerian, and they ruled the empire in a very tricky time of the third century. He was um, emperor with his father from 250 to 263, I think, or rather 250 to 260, something like that. And then he ruled by himself from 260 to 268, something like that. Anyhow, the mid to late part of the third century. His father, Valerian, was the only emperor to have been actually captured by his enemies. He ended up serving as a footstool to Shakur, his Persian captor. And he met an even nastier end, apparently. Either he, he died by having molten gold poured down his throat, or he was skinned alive, according to some accounts, and then stuffed and served as a trophy to Shakur, the Persian ruler. Anyway, either way, he meets a pretty nasty end. But his son, Gallienus, who was the husband of this lady here, Salonina, um, ruled by himself to, to some success during a very, very tricky part. When the world and his wife seemed to be want, want to become emperor, um, and hence it was very aptly known as the crisis of the third century. But back to this coin, we don't know an awful lot about Salonina. An incredible bust remains of her. She was a handsome woman. She had quite a big nose, and even though you can't see it necessarily in this portrait of her, um, other coins do show her, her rather prominent nose. And um, one of the other reasons I've had to be slightly careful with this coin is that um, 
you can definitely see remains of where, where it was silvered. And, well, they were supposed to be silver coins, the Antoninus, the Antoninianas, but it, it, but it hardly had any silver in it at all come, come, um, come the sort of late third century. And as you can see on this, on this copper coin. But anyway, so it's Salonina, um, a remarkable woman um, and, and empress at a, at a rather remarkable time. So I'm really pleased with that. It's one of only two or three Saloninas I found. Um, and then this. Well, it's a clothes hook, and it's a Tudor clothes hook, I think. Clothes hooks, uh, I mean, and I've got, I've got another Tudor one here I find quite recently. It was a, and it's one of the viewers of this channel said, I thought it was a sort of Victorian one. He said, no, no, absolutely not. It's, a, it's Tudor as well. And the reason I thought so is because the back looks very sort of modern, but it's not. This is a Tudor one too. But um, you, the, the clothes hook was a very common adornment as it were um, during the sort of early medieval times or sort of Saxon times and then it went completely out of fashion for three or four hundred years until and um, maybe even more until you get until the Tudors started using them again and you get post medieval ones as well um, of, of, of which the Tudor period would have been the start of but it's a terribly pretty one um, I'm not quite sure I'm not sure exactly how they were used they were I think they were used in many ways to, to hook up your dress um, to avoid it trailing along the floor and muddy streets and stuff, but all sorts of things. But that's just a particularly nice one, so I'm pleased with that as well. Anyway, let's go back to the fields, to rather a nicer time. Now, we go back to the, exactly the same spot, but only a couple of weeks ago, when the weather has taken a nice turn. It doesn't feel like summer yet, but we can't be far off it. It doesn't feel like summer yet, but we can't be far off it. But the, th the, the problem I'm having really now, at this time of the year, well, most of the fields are in crop, so most of us are reduced to pasture. And even then, it's not the best place to go when it's too dry and not the best place for the pasture to dig it when it's too dry. But that pasture in particular, I mean, I'm finding less and less for very obvious reasons. This hobby, that's the way it works. You find, once you dug something out of the ground, it's not there to be dug again. And therefore I find myself finding a couple of really, really good things, but not necessarily enough to make a whole, make a whole video. So that, that section, even though we found some lovely things, I mean, I had slightly on the back burner because I didn't feel there was enough. But if I go back to exactly the same spot and find other things, then it, it's just the perfect way of tying in a video because we're actually searching the same field just at different times and that's might that might happen a bit now um with these pasture fields which i've done an awful you know an awful lot but the fact that they're still showing stuff is just brilliant anyway the, i'm very pleased we did get back to this spot because i find a couple of absolutely bonkers things um and and w w which you'll see and which we will have to come back here for to have a closer look. So thank you very much for listening to all that and let's go back to that field. Hi there. It is a beautiful day and fortunately the sun and the wind, because we're in the UK and it's always blowing a hurricane these days, it seems, um, are coming from different directions, which is brilliant, which means you can hopefully hear me and, and see me properly at the same time. And it's lovely to be out. I mean, I've done this pasture a thousand times, as you probably know. I'm concentrating really hard on a small area. Um, I haven't gone over it a million times with the day as two to be fair. So at the moment I'm just gonna, I'm just really putting this machine through its paces. A lot of you asked me for the settings, please don't keep doing that yet. I'm just not experienced enough and I know I use it in a way that most people won't because I don't like it being sparky and powerful. I hate it, it drives me mad. So I keep the, I keep it all quite gentle and just really, really keep my ears open with these and it seems to be working because I've just dug something from down here which I'll show you in a minute because I've got a couple of other things first. But I could hear the tiniest squeak amongst a little bit of iron grunting and you could be forgiven to think for thinking that's just the edge of iron. I, something told me it wasn't and it's about 15 inches down and I'll show you in a second but it just goes to show. Anyway I found a load of bottle tops, some cartridges, about £2.50 in cash um, which is great and then this. Now 
this was deep as well, so I'm not surprised I haven't found it before. I'm limiting myself. Now I found a few ring pulls and stuff. I'm not digging anything close to the surface. I, I really just want to use this for trying to get eek out the deep stuff. Now it's a crotal belt, but it's unlike any that I've found before. Um, I don't know how early it is. It's got a, I'm not sure. It depends if that's a drilled hole or not, which, well, yeah, it could be, but possibly not. But anyway, what's, it's got the most extraordinary design on it. I've never seen, I've seen that sort of the scallop shapes, but not with the sort of cross hatching on it. It's got a lovely T on it as well. And it's got a bit of decoration in the top half, but not much, I don't think. But that's the fast for me. I mean, that's absolutely just wonderful. I mean, we won't go whiz back to headquarters with it now, but we will go, but we'll have a closer look at it later. Let's see. Now the dirt's coming out. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna ring. Um, that's just lovely. It's one of the best I've ever found. And then a little tiny bit of strap end. Um, which is a good sign and um, this very early buckle by the look of it it's not got any of the sort of inset that you associate with some of these um, later buckles so I think that might that could possibly even be Roman and then this now this isn't going to win any beauty awards either but it's just the very just the sheer depth of it I mean it's just some copper don't ignore so running it like I am on this those um very low buzzes because it, it's often copper now it's a, just a strap end now it's a strap end it's a medieval strap end but it's a full one it's got this lovely zigzagging it's got both sides to it um, and it's just a beautiful design and just really really cool so the bottom line is that look oh, that's a foot and a half easily and um, there's loads of stuff still here it's just eking it out which is going to be the um be the trick my new speaker's on its way oh look all the pollen on my thing um so that'll be in the next video now so you won't be able to hear this i'm afraid but sorry you just have to you just have to go bear with me now it's slightly drawn out but i can't hear any any iron Though I have been being fooled by, um, by bottle tops today. So it possibly one of those. I never got fooled by bottle tops with the old one. Um, now that's still quite encouraging because it's deep. But, but slightly drawn out, if you know what I mean, if you're a Deus user. If it's a long sort of drawn out signal it's quite often iron well it's about nine inches down as i said i'm now limiting myself to the the deeper signals i don't want to be digging modern coins all day I don't mind if i miss the odd thing not dug much lead yet famous last words i bet this is lead now has to be hasn't it <laughs> having said that i think it's got to be there it's still in there i think this is going to be iron i'm afraid boys i don't think this is this is not a good, this is not a good, yeah, look, the iron that fools you the most, circular misshapen iron in a circle with a, with a pole in the middle, that's going to get you, that really will. Well, oh my days, I, I haven't really, I haven't even really looked at it. But I know what it is, and I, my heart skipped a beat. I only know what it is because I found one before. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I flipped it over, I just, 
my everything does, but I just gasped. I found a bottle top. These still confuse me. This didn't sound unlike it. And oh my Lord. Now I know what it is, because as I said, I found one before and it is, I think it's a Saxon brooch. Um, I'm not gonna rub it too much. It's got all its gilding on the back. You can see where the, my Lord. I've got to take a bit of a breath. I was not expecting this. Not from an area I've done a lot before. Um, whoa. Um, it's got a lot of its gilding and it's got all that enameling there. Now, we're not going to do too much to it here because I just don't want to, um, I, don't, I don't want to d damage it in any way at all. I'm, you're always telling me, quite rightly, don't rub things, stop rubbing things um, in the field. Um, and I do a little, probably a bit too often, but I can't wait. And I'm not bringing out a girly spritz, so I'm not bringing out pokey things or spritzers or coin pods or anything. I carry enough stuff as it is. I quite like just to get it home and look at it properly there, which is exactly what we'll do, because that is just one of the best things I've probably possibly one of the best things I've ever ever found and it's just going to be oh, just so just wonderful all cleaned up right now let's do let's go let's go straight back to headquarters now come on I honestly believe that one of the best things about this hobby is is what you can learn from your finds in doing the research whether it's hammered coins or Roman coins or jewelry or anything that you're lucky enough to find. I mean, spindle walls, I mean, it doesn't matter what it might be. It's just the fun of actually getting to grips with actually what it is. Um, and, and once you've learned something, as I often say, you, you, never, you never forget it, you know? And so you find something, you're not sure what it is, you research it, you know what it is. Every time you, you see it from that moment on, you'll, you'll know what it is. And, and these two, well, I say two because I'm lucky enough to have found one before, as I think I mentioned in the field. And they are very, very similar. I mean, what absolutely gobsmacking objects. I mean, I am so lucky. I've got, <laughs> I've got to be really careful with this, watch. <laughs> that's only been there for seconds. Look, it's flaming. That, that's, how, that's how strong the sun is. <laughs> anyway, now this is the first one I found. And the main difference between the two is that it, it, this one's got nodules. This one's got little sort of knobs coming out of the side and it's sadly it's missing one but the rest are still there it's almost identical in size to the second one we found which is this one here now now they date to the 10th to the 11th century and at one point I actually thought that maybe this one was missing its knobs but I've done some research on it I didn't have my computer to hand so there's no there's no looking up quickly um, now and they are Weech describes them, um, if you look at the Portable Antiquity Scheme website, where there are several which are very, very similar, as, as a very similar type, from exactly the same age, one is tw class 20A, I think it is, which has the knobs, and one is class 20B, which doesn't have the knobs, which is the second one. Now, this one is a bit duller than the first one I found. I've got into trouble cleaning enamel before on brooches, on a Roman brooch. I dug away at it and almost completely ruined it. So, bar cleaning the gilding and just gently cleaning the enamel off it. I don't dare go any further, but that's quite honestly is absolutely enough for me. Now, the technique they've used in both these is called cloissonné, which was a technique where you get the actual wire filaments or gold wire filaments in this case, or one of them, um, well, it's usually gold or brass, and, you, and the enamelling goes in between it. The, that may, means they're a slightly later brooch. The, the earlier ones are something called champelevé, Champelever, something like that. I can't remember exactly how it's, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced. Which is actually um, making little troughs or holes in the metal work, i.e. the bronze or the copper, and you fill it in like that. This is a much more intricate way of doing it. Anyway, I've gone on for far too long. Two absolutely wonderful um, Anglo-Saxon, Saxon, enamel and gilded disc brooches from the 10th or the 11th from the 10th to the 11th century. And finding one is just, you know, a metal detectorist dream. So to find two is just absolutely incredible. I mean, I mean, what, what more can I say? In many ways, I actually prefer the second one. It's got more gold on it. Um, Tasky, come here. Up you go. Up. 
Anyway, from me and him and sunny North Devon, which I don't think is going to last, um, thank you very much for listening to all that. And, um, and let's go back to the field. Well, you'll know more, more about it than I do now. And I'm gonna, I won't be able to concentrate much for the rest of the day with that in my pocket. But hey ho, we'll, 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 we'll go on, we'll, we'll soldier on. <laughs> it's a nice problem to have. Um, but wow, 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 wow. Just goes to show, I don't quite know how I missed it, but maybe because there's not an awful lot of, well, who knows, but I, I'm absolutely thrilled. <sighs> Well, I'm not sure it's going to be much fun carrying this around for the rest of the day. Where is it? Now, <laughs> to be fair, it does look old. Just from the top it looks old. I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not going to dress it up. It's a, it's a nail. It's a nail of sorts. It's a very big, pointy square, as it were. I, it starts off a square and moves into the point. Um, nail, but I didn't think it could be anything else. But it's not going to be much fun carrying this around for the rest of the day, but I'll, I'll be careful. I mean, I've not found one like this. I mean, this, today's been a day of, a brilliant day for finding firsts. I mean, it looks like it's had a lot of use being smashed around on the top. The fact is made of copper, alloy of sorts. I mean, who knows? Um, but just a really cool find. I'm pleased with that. Um, but God knows how old it is. Um, so if anyone can help me, or we'll just have a quick look when we go back to HQ. Isn't that cool? Like just from the top, it looks like it's had a lot of bashing. Well, that was borderline, whether I dug this or not as it was very close to the surface. And as I said, I'm sort of ignoring those today, but I'm glad I didn't. I wonder what it, look, it's a strap end of sorts, I think. Yeah. Okay, look, that's not gonna break any records, but it's a jolly nice medieval thing. Let's see if I can get, um, you know, it's just a brilliant sign for finding these all sorts of possibilities are open. It's got both its sides there. You know, you're going to find silver, coins, a little bit of decoration just there by the look of it. Um, it's a good sign and I'm pleased I dug it. Nice. Medieval strapping. God, it's just so... I'll just wait for that plane to go across. <laughs> Taking well a long time, so bugger it. Um, just so love, amazing to be out when it's like this. I mean, just the fields are just full of these buttercups. The colour is just beautiful. I mean, all the crap that's going on in the world just to be by yourself on a day like this is just couldn't ask for any more. Now, I am being, as I said, I'm being a bit fooled by bottle tops today. Um, they really can get you with these. I know you can probably bottle cap reject and all that rubbish. I don't really want to be playing around with all that lot. Quite happy with where I've got this machine at the moment. Um, but that's just got enough about it as well. Still in there. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bottle top. It's too harsh to be a cartridge. Um, Still learning it, um, but it's it's but it is quite good fun. Well, it's quite deep. It's certainly sort of seven or eight inches, I would say. God, I don't know if you saw the last video of all the flies. I, I was chased off the field, effectively. They're sort of coming back to me here. Yeah, it's still in there. It might be deep iron as well. But it, it doesn't, there's no buzz, but... Um, ah, wouldn't you know it? Sorry, these live digs are driving me a bit mad. 
just a cartridge. I didn't think it was a cartridge. Um, God, you've got to dig them. It could be a Roman coin. Look, that size thing could be a Roman coin quite easily. Well, that gave a sound as well. And I find a few of these up here um, because this, I think they were stationed here during the war. It's an artillery badge. Um, I don't know much about these, but it's a lovely one, isn't it? Um, First World War, I imagine. Don't mind finding those, especially in that condition. Look at that. Well, I don't know what on earth this is. When I first got it out, I thought it just wasn't like a cartridge. I'll show you. I've got so many cartridges on me. Here we go. I mean, look, you can understand that they look identical, don't they? But then on the other side, I mean, it's the lid of something. If I see a thread, then it, then it is obviously, but I don't think there is a thread in that. And it's just far too heavy to be a cartridge end. Um, but God knows what it is. I've never seen anything like it. I just don't know how old it is. I mean, definitely got some design on it there. Um, but I don't know what they are. And the hole looks a bit wonky. I absolutely love it. But, you know, gosh, really is a day-to-day -day of, of things I've just never found before. It's fabulous. Well, that made a lovely sound, as you can imagine. It's not very old, but it's in lovely condition. And it's a George V penny. Or half penny. Is it half penny or penny? One penny. Um, 1917. So that's really cool. We'll end on this because I've come to the end, but it's just been lovely. Ah, oh, that brooch. Now I'm afraid to say this does sound like a cartridge and nothing else, but I am struggling a bit finding signals. I mean, I've been here so many times, you've got to remember, um, that they're gonna be fewer and fewer and to find anything is a bonus. I mean, I do sometimes come here without even, I don't bother filming. I didn't find anything. Well, the fact that it's still in there is promising, even though I think it might be just on the side. But yeah, it's going to be a ring pull or a cartridge, I'm afraid. It's not. It's a. T <laughs> it's an old 5P. Gosh, I found some money today. I found about four and a half quid. There's signals I don't usually dig. Because I know that something very loud and ballsy is going to be a modern coin if it's close to the surface. And that's just another one. Well, well, it's not mod well, it's modern, but it's not spendable. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. I mean, really fabulous. Um, and, um, and see you next time.